Hi everyone, let's have a look at my low time frame and micro bullish and bearish elite wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the bullish scenario where we are looking for a three wave structure in W, a three wave structure in wave X that is already finished. And now we're looking for another three wave structure to the upside, which is then very likely to be a zigzag, which is a five, three, five wave move because wave W over here is a zigzag as well. So this is a five, three, five to the upside. Then you have any corrective pattern in wave X and then another three wave move in a five, three, five creates a double zigzag pattern. If we then look at the target area for wave Y, one of the targets is the 0 0.618, which is sitting at 27.6K, which price has not yet reached. But the most common target for a wave Y is between the 1 and the 1 1.236, which is between 28.2K and 28.7K. Now, a rare target for wave Y is the 1.618 all the way up here at 29.3K. And what is interesting is that we do have a target box over here sitting between 28.9K and 29.2K. And not to forget, we also have some highs over here right inside this target area for wave Y at 28.3K. So in this scenario, we expect a move to the upside followed by a three wave move down and then another impulsive structure to the upside. If, however, price decides to continue pushing to the upside like this, it is unlikely this is gonna be a wave Y and it is more likely this is gonna be a wave one, two, and then a continuation in a wave three, to the upside where if that is true you also want to see the volume move to the upside while price is moving to, up to the upside as well so in a wave y what you want to see is a five three and then another five wave move to the upside as a wave y has to be a three wave structure if we then look at the more bearish scenario which is an alternative as it stands at the moment we're looking again at this to be a w but then this wave x is not yet finished now it does mean that this wave x is very very long in time compared to this wave w but you always need a bearish scenario when counting Elliott waves. So then we have a three wave structure over here and then a W followed by a wave X, which can be any corrective pattern. And in this scenario, it is again a double zigzag in a 535 up corrective pattern and then another 535 to the upside, where then the most common target area for this being then a five or a, a three 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 wave move to the upside so a wxy is between the one and the 1.236 so you can see that the one to one actually has been tagged we are however very very close to well not a triple top because we actually took these highs but now a double top because you have one two over here so we're very close to taking this high and also actually to the high above and as you can see both of those highs are inside this target area for a wave x now if we are going to take these highs uh, well, I prefer still the other scenario, but in the bearish scenario, one would turn around, grab the liquidity, turn around to the downside or already because we hit the target area to the downside. And then the target area as it stands right now over here, taken from the high of W to the low of this W to the high of X at the moment is between the one and the 1.236 for this then being a wave Y, which is between 26.3K and 26K, which also then still includes that uh, daily naked point of control at 26.350. Now, this is still an alternative scenario, but it is important to keep in mind that we can always have more downside before upside. But again, wave X would be very, very long. But the reason I thought of that scenario is that in this structure, this wave Y is very, very short compared to this W. So that is the reason why the bearish scenario over here exists. And it's, it is important to know about also for trading, of course. Now, a scenario that is unlikely, but I got a question about this. So that's why I show it over here. This is a uh, in the YouTube comments, by the way, in my previous video, this is a scenario that that is not possible. So over here, we then have a W, X, and then this is a wave Y. And I had the question, could this high that we have at the moment already be the high of this wave Y for then the end of this corrective structure and more downside expected to at least taking this lows over here at 25.8K? And my answer is no. And that has mainly to do with this structure. So wave W, absolutely fine. Wave X, absolutely fine as well. But wave Y is the problem. So wave Y cannot end with a double zigzag. 
And we're talking about a double zigzag because this is a 535. Then you have a corrective structure and then a, another potential or has to be 535 to the upside, which then creates a double zigzag. This is zigzag number one and this is zigzag number two. And a double zigzag is not allowed inside a wave Y to end a corrective structure. You can have a double zigzag in a wave X, but not in a wave Y. So that is the reason why this scenario is not valid and therefore we can remove it from my chart. So that's what we're gonna do. If we then go to the low time frame, or actually micro time frame, there's two scenarios I'd like to talk to you about, maybe even three actually. The first one is this being a wave one, two, followed by another one, two, and this push to the upside being part of a wave three, followed by four and then five. And as it stands now, the candles on the 15 minute time frame are bouncing nicely on this wave, uh, on the 0 0.5 Fibonacci, taken from the low of this wave two to the high of this wave three, which is what you want to see. You don't want to see candles close below the 0 0.5, which is sitting at 27.253. So this is an important level. If, however, this gets broken, it's more likely this is not a wave four anymore. And for me, the true invalidation of this being a wave four, like the real invalidation, is if it is gonna enter the price section of this wave one at 27.1K, because that is not allowed in uh, or for a wave four. So that's something to take into account. And if price does move to the downside. Another, which is an even more bullish scenario I have in mind, but not drawn out, is this to be a wave one, two, another one, two, and then another one, two, before then a very big push to the upside. However, with the low time frame scenario that I have, in this then being a WXY, this would would like signal a wave three. So so then instead of this being a WXY looking for a Y, it is much more likely we're gonna get a really big wave three to the upside instead of a three wave structure. So keep that in mind, the low time frames over here, where we are right now, also with the target box, this is very important for the low time frame counts I've just shown you, as well as by the way, the high time frame count that I've shown in my high time frame video, which you can find in my end screen at the end of this video. Now we did reach this target box we were looking for this target box to be hit and found some resistance between 27.3k and 27.4k and as you can see no candles have closed above this target box with confidence so therefore well we found resistance currently ranging right about below this target box the bearish scenario is that this is a three wave structure in a w then we have some sort of a structure in a wave X. This is going to be like one, three or five minute counting on Elliott waves, which is something I don't do. And then eventually we have another three wave structure to the upside in a wave Y. Price rejected at the most common target area for this wave Y. And then we expect at least a three wave bigger structure to the downside again, if not continuation for the bearish low time frame scenario I've shown earlier. The invalidation for this scenario is if price is going to move to the upside at 27.5k. Now let's have a look then at the bearish CVD divergences very, very locally. So what is happening? Let me quickly refresh just to be sure. So what has happened is price moved to the upside and then started to move to the downside. And what's interesting is uh, the blue and the yellow CVD, but let's start with the yellow one. So the yellow one had a big drop in CVD, market shorts or people exiting their long positions, whatever it is. And what we are looking at now is a bullish CVD divergence between, let's see, not, not really that low yet, but at least a small range that we have over here, the few 15 minute candles. And you can see the CVD over here in yellow and currently price over here made a lower CVD. So a higher low on price, lower low on the CVD, which is a bullish divergence. Now that doesn't mean price can't go a little bit lower. This divergence is invalidated the moment price is gonna take this low, but moving a little bit further to the downside is absolutely fine as long as it doesn't take this low over here. And if this is still a potential one, two, one, two, and then another one, two, then a common area for a wave two, like the third wave two basically, is gonna be between the 0 0.5, the golden pocket and the 786. So these are areas to keep it to account as well. So if price moves down, make sure to keep an eye on the 0 0.5 golden pocket and the 0 0.786. And if it moves down, then the CVD, the yellow CVD line might continue to move down as well and actually create bullish divergences with the lows of this range, which would be a stronger divergence in my opinion. If we then zoom in, 
to what is happening here on the five. So the five minute, very low time frame, not my favorite, but it is still important to show is because we had a bullish divergence. So over here, higher low on price, lower low on the CVD, which is a bullish divergence. However, very, very locally, even lower time frame. I think that's that's almost like one minute stuff. So don't know how relevant this is, but we created a lower high over here, higher high on the blue CVD price pushing to the downside, but that one already played out, right? So that one is uh, not valid. So we still have a little bullish CVD over here that didn't yet play out at the time of recording this video. And we have the yellow CVD, which as it stands now is also a bullish CVD where the target is gonna be taking this high over here. If we then go to the higher time frame CVDs, which I think are always important to show, we still have the bearish CVD that is not yet invalidated. The bearish CVD from this high over here to the lower high it created. However, as you can also see, price retraced all the way to the 886 from this bearish CVD. So the FIB that you see is taken from the high to the low. And if candles close above the 886, it's usually a sign where, you know, now or later gonna take this high over here as well as this high, because closing above the 886 is not something you want to see for a big move to the downside usually. So one can expect this bearish divergence to be invalidated. But still, as it stands, it is not yet. And the target is 26.3K for this bearish divergence. The bullish divergence, well, this one already played out. Higher low in price and then a lower low on the CVD. Target was 27.3K, has already been played out. So I can actually remove this from the chart. Very, very nice indeed. And then we have the bigger bullish CVD over here. Higher low in price, lower low in CVD. Target is 27.6 to 7K, which has not yet been reached. But this is still a very important target for me for if price is going to push to the upside. So I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the macro and the high time frame video if you're interested. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing. And I will see you at the next one. Bye bye.